Howdy, everyone. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about information security. All right. I will start with one of the probably the most common we are all familiar with information security mechanism, password system. All right. I think you all have experience creating an online account uh, being asked to select a password. You have seen the requirement, all right? You select a password, needs to be this many long, and it has uh, include uh, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and uh, signal, no, symbols, <laughs> all right? And then it cannot be a dictionary word, and uh, don't write it down, don't share it with others, and then uh, uh, you have 10 different uh, accounts, uh, create 10 different uh, uh, passwords, all right? So, First of all, I will ask, do you think these are good policies? Yes, I do. I believe those are excellent policies. Probably scientists spend quite some time to figure out uh, these policies and recommend it to us. All right. My second question will be, uh, do you all follow all of them? I do not, OK? <laughs> I, first of all, I write them down, OK? And I use similar if not completely the same password across different accounts. Now, I ask myself, I do that because I don't believe those are good policies? Uh-uh. I probably, I'm genuinely be believe those are good policies. And then when I'm uh, violating those policies, is it because I want to purposely harm myself? Probably not. Something else is going on to make me behave the way I did. Okay, give you another example. I think you, you, you have seen uh, surveys like this if you are not asked to fill out this kind of survey, but at least in uh, newspaper articles you see this, uh, okay, uh, how many percentage of people they uh, value very much about their private information, and these are the very important to them, and I'm going to uh, invest heavily to protect my private information, this kind of uh, survey result. Uh, it's pretty common, all right? But researchers are curious to observe people's actual behavior in, in, in real world scenario regarding their private information. So there is this paper, and then the researcher have this observation, all right? I blow it up. Here it says, people will tell you that their privacy is very important but they are more than happy to give you a DNA sample in exchange for a Big Mac, all right? <laughs> this is uh, obviously exaggeration, but the point, I, I, I think it's valid. That is, um, first of all, when I'm answering those surveys, am I lying? Probably not. I genuinely believe those are important, and I want to uh, make great effort in protecting my privacy, first of all. Second of all, in reality, uh, in exchange for 5% discount, I'm going to provide everything they ask me to provide. When I'm doing that, am I purposely trying to harm myself? Again, chances are it's not. So again, there's something missing in the current understanding of information security. So to look at it, we step back a little bit to take a look at the uh, what I call the evolution of information security, how they get to this point, okay? So uh, I would say uh, information security, uh, the first wave, I call it first wave, it's called technology centric, meaning at that time the focal point is technology, algorithms, protocols. The main contributor in that uh, stage is the scientist, the STEM field, experts, science, technology, engin engineering, uh, mathematics. Uh, so those are the smartest people in the, in the world, they try to come up with technical artifacts. Right? That's the foundation of information security. That's what I call first wave. Second wave, now we have all those uh, technical artifacts. How do we use it? Well, that's the second wave. I call it economic centric. That means now we have all these uh, technology artifacts available. 
now we attach uh, uh, cost and benefit parameters to it, and then we optimize. Either maximize uh, payoff or minimize cost. That's how we uh, develop optimum policies. You are going to use the technology this way, and this is the policy you should follow. Right? In this way, the main contributor are classic economists, management science experts. And we are interested in uh, developing optimum security incentive mechanisms, policies, regulations. That's what I call second wave. Now, obviously, from my uh, earlier example, it seems like uh, something is lacking. The technology, the optimum uh, design of the policy, still not sufficient. So what, uh, what is missing? What is lacking? Now, I would like to uh, look at it from another angle, from bad guys' angle. Those bad guys, when they want to attack our information security, what are they looking for? All right, I'll show you this guy. His name is Kevin Minnick, all right? Uh, you can see here, uh, he is called the most infamous hacker of all time, all right? Uh, this is a before and after picture of him. Before, after, uh, before picture, it is 1994. This is FBI's uh, wanted warrant on him for cyber crimes. And he was arrested in 1995, spent five years in a federal prison. And then this is the after picture. So now he's one of the good guys. He's a security consultant. And he travels around the world has his, uh, and give advices on information security. All right. uh, by the way, this is a business car. Do you recognize what those things are? They, those are tools to pick a lock. Okay. You can watch a YouTube video, so how to use his business card to pick a lock. But anyway, uh, let's see how he, what he's looking for when he's trying to attack a target system. I get this quote. He said, uh, companies spend this uh, 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 money and effort on those uh, uh, technical artifacts. They are wasted if they are not addressing the weakest link in the security chain. What is the weakest link? The people. The people who directly interact with the technology, the people who make the ultimate decisions of do I use this, do I use that, do I use it this way, do I use, use it that way, do I behave this way, do I behave that way. That it is the human elements. So he believes, and I agree with him, that's the weakest link. That makes us think about now information security, probably we are now entering a new era. Uh, I'll call it the third wave of information security, which is, I call it human century. Now, here we study human, uh, study uh, information security from the perspective of human decision making. That's the focal point. So human decision making in the real world, in the reality, in the real scenario, that's what we are going to be focusing on. And in this wave of information security, the main contributor will come from a whole branch of experts. The psychology, neuroscience, how brain works, the behavioral economics, okay, the sociology, all right? Everything, all the factors that will affect human decision making play a part in this uh, uh, human centric information uh, security. And our goal in this uh, new wave of information security will be still develop technology, develop uh, te uh, technical artifacts, but now we develop uh, technology that a human. Normal people, people like you and me, will understand and we are going to be able, capable and willing to use it and use it the right way, right? And we are going to uh, develop policies and regulations 
uh, such that uh, people like you and me not only understand it, not only uh, agree with it, but we are able to actually follow those, uh, those, those uh, policies in real life, in reality. So that's the essence of human-centric information. I believe that's the uh, 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 essence of what's called gradients, that meaning people from multiple backgrounds, expertise coming together, working towards a common goal. And the human-centric information system is a perfect example of such an endeavor. And uh, I would like to point out that uh, this institute, all right, Texas A&M, we are in a prime position to be a leader of uh, information security in general and the human-centric information security in particular. I will point, point out something. First of all, this institute, we have a Texas A&M Cybersecurity Center, which I am affiliated with. All right. uh, this center is the foundation based on which uh, Texas A&M University has been recognized by uh, uh, DHS and the NSA as a center of academic excellence. That's how those acronym what it means. Center of academic excellence in cyber defense education, cyber research, and cyber operation. It's one of the only nine higher education institute in, in the nation that gather all three desi uh, destinations, okay? So, which means anything related to cybersecurity we have the experts, we have the resources, we are or we can be the leader. And uh, you can look around ca uh, across campus. We have a world-renowned engineering school, right? That provides the technical foundation, right? The first wave. How about the second wave? We have a pretty highly reputable uh, business school and the Department of uh, Economics that uh, show us how to optimize the resources. Then how about the third wave of human century? We have a college called College of Education and Human Development. And the different colleges, we have a, a Department of Psychology, Department of uh, uh, Neuroscience, Brain Sciences. And across campus, you're going to see uh, various research institutes like Human Behavior Lab and the Texas A&M Institute of Neurosciences, all these organizations provide a good foundation for us, for Texas A&M University to become a pioneer, a leader in this uh, information security in general and in human-centric information security in particular. So I guess I will invite uh, all of you, all right, those of you who are young or young at heart, and a talented mind to uh, join us together, and work together, collaborate together, so that together we can usher in this new era of information security, the human-centric information security. All right, thank you.